This took me years to learn, but only a day to make. And here's the uncomfortable question I keep coming back to. If AI can do this with one click, then what's the point of learning or teaching DaVinci Resolve? Because my entire channel is based on teaching people how to do things from scratch. But suddenly the industry is telling you that the only thing that matters is shortcuts. So let me ask you something. Is this an AI transition or is this handmade by an editor? Let me know down below in the comments. So this isn't just a philosophical question for me. If learning editing won't matter anymore, then this channel might not matter anymore either. So today I'm gonna go head to head to create this eye transition inside of DaVinci Resolve and by using AI later on in the video. So the very first step in the process was filming the footage. Now that's where I immediately ran into a problem. I don't have a great macro lens. So when I tried to film my eye, I couldn't get a quality close-up shot of my eye. Plus I'm an editor, so my eyes are pretty much always bloodshot. So I did what any other person would do. I went online to some stock footage websites and tried to find myself the clip, but I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a clip of an eye opening without too much movement so that I could then transition through the eye and I just couldn't find it. But then I thought of an idea. So I downloaded a generic clip and then I grabbed a screenshot of the open eye. I then took that into Nano Banana Pro and I generated an image of a closed eye. Then with Kling 2.5 Turbo, I generated a video from the closed eye to the open eye, simulating the exact video that I wanted. And this is a good example of where AI can fill in some gaps, but the issue is I don't want it to replace or fill in all the gaps because that would replace me. And for the exit shot, it was easy enough to find one of those online. Now, I've seen a lot of eye transition tutorials out there, but honestly, they all seem a little bit flat. A lot of them just require some duplicating layers, some blur, some motion blur, and there you have it, you're zooming into an eye. But that's the issue. That's not really what I want to do. I don't want to just zoom into an eye. I want to travel through an eye. And that's where my idea shifted. If I want the camera to actually travel through the eye, then I need to create a 3D space for the camera to travel through. So the goal became simple. I just needed to recreate the eye in a 3D space. But I really want to be clear about this. I'm not a 3D artist. I'm not a VFX artist. I don't use Blender. So we're doing this all inside of DaVinci Resolve. And this has to be approachable or achievable by any editor out there. So I started off with the most basic question. What does the eye actually need? Well, at its core, it needs a tunnel for the camera to travel through. So I grabbed a simple 3D cylinder and aligned it with the eye. And at first, it was just a white tube, obviously not great. So the next step was creating an eye texture. I tried zooming in on the image of the eye to use it as a texture, but the tunnel was so long that the texture stretched out and completely fell apart. And that's where the fast noise came in. Now, fast noise is usually used for things like fog or smoke, but it's also great for procedural textures. I sampled colors from the eye and used a fast noise node to build a base texture. It worked, but it felt a little too artificial. So I layered the real eye image back on top, zoomed in on just the iris area, reduced the opacity, and suddenly it felt way more believable. But I didn't want this texture to just be static. An eye isn't perfectly still, it has subtle movement, and a portal has to have a little bit of movement in it. So I added another fast noise node and I animated the seed. This makes that texture move around slightly. I then used that to displace the image in 2D space, but it didn't quite sell the effect. And that's because we're traveling through a three-dimensional space. So using a similar method, I used a fast noise node, I animated the seed, and then input that into a displaced 3D node, which now makes the tunnel warp and shift in 3D space. Okay, so we have the core, but now we need to blend this in with the footage. And this part was surprisingly simple. I took the footage of the eye and aligned it in 3D space with an image plane. I then aligned the tunnel behind it and I masked a circular hole where the tunnel would show through. I increased the softness by a bunch and suddenly the transition from the real eye to the 3D eye was almost invisible. But something was still missing the pupil, because the biggest thing that sells depth is parallax. So I created a 3D sphere, lined it up with the pupil, and used the real pupil as a texture from the footage. Now, when the camera moves, you get actual depth separation and it immediately feels more three-dimensional. And at this point, my 3D eye was pretty much fully built. Now, before we get into the 3D camera animation, I just wanna point out the obvious. AI is definitely gonna be a whole lot faster than me when it comes to building this effect. 
and we'll talk about that more later. But because of that, I've been on the hunt recently to try find workflows and shortcuts to really increase my editing speed so that I can have some of my time back. And one thing that genuinely helped me with that was a class I took on Skillshare called Edit Faster in DaVinci Resolve, a YouTube workflow for creators. Now, what I really liked about this class on Skillshare is that it's not designed for YouTube, meaning that the pace is a whole lot more relaxed and I can actually absorb the information in the teaching class because on Skillshare, they don't need to worry about YouTube retention and drop-offs and all that. It's just a class focused on teaching. And because of that, the pace is a whole lot more approachable and it's a whole lot more informative than anything else I can find on YouTube. There were a bunch of color grading workflow tips that have already changed how I approach projects, especially around staying organized and not overworking shots. It has shaved off time off of my edits and it's something that I'll be using in the long term. And with all that being said, if you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is a platform that has creative classes taught by world-class professionals that are creatives, entrepreneurs, editors, designers, you name it. And everything is designed so that you can actually learn at your own pace and develop real skills. So if you're editing in DaVinci Resolve and trying to stay competitive in a world where AI keeps getting faster and faster, then this is honestly a great place to sharpen your workflow. And here's their offer. The first 500 people to use the link down below in the description or scan the QR code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare plus 20% off their first payment. So jump in, take a class and see if it works for you. All right, let's get into this camera animation. And this part took a lot of trial and error. Now, I'm not a 3D animator, but with some tweaking, I got the motion that felt right. The camera starts just outside the eye, moves just below the pupil, and then exits out of the back of the tunnel. And the motion eases in super smoothly and then exits the tunnel really, really fast. And the speed change is what gives this transition a whole lot of energy. Now, I have two problems that I need to fix. Obviously, the eye starts closed at the start of the footage, and right now when it closes, the 3D scene is overlaying with that closed eye, and it obviously just looks terrible. And secondly, when we leave the tunnel, it's just sort of a hard cut because there's no feathering and it just exits too abruptly, and I really want to integrate that with the next scene. So let's first tackle blending this in with the original footage. So I just used some simple keyframing and some blending to transition from the real footage to the eye footage, but I made sure to do that while the camera is zooming in because that just hides that transition a whole lot better. And now let's talk about the end of the transition, the end of the tunnel. Now, the easiest solution that I could think of was just doing a luma fade transition. So in this case, I grabbed a bitmap node, which might sound intimidating, but it was pretty easy to use. I pretty much just used it to fade off the brighter areas first and then the darker areas. That creates these falling trails and suddenly the exit feels more intentional instead of just this abrupt ending. Next, I tied it all together with some camera shake and some really good motion blur that you can get from my store, shameless plug right there, and I layered the river clip beneath it. And on the river clip, all I did was a little bit of speed ramping and color matching, and it all came together. And honestly, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Not because it's perfect, but because it's completely original and didn't exist anywhere else. And I couldn't have done this without watching years of other tutorials. And that's what I meant when I said this took years to learn, but a day to make because there's not one tutorial that teaches you how to do this. Rather, it was a collective group of hundreds of small tutorials that I could combine in a creative way to produce this end result. And that's the real value about this huge network of DaVinci Resolve tutorials out there and a huge respect to all of the DaVinci Resolve creators out there that have been doing this for years on end and teaching people like myself for a very long, long time. But that's enough about DaVinci Resolve right now. Let's talk about the AI version. Now, to accomplish this, I pretty much just needed to take a screenshot of the open eye and of the start of the river clip and then bring those into Higgs field. And now Kling 2.5 Turbo is my go-to video generator, if that's what you wanna call it. And pretty much I can write a prompt to say, transition through this eye towards this river clip. And then in DaVinci Resolve, I can blend those clips together with the real footage and it should look pretty seamless. Now, I tried a lot of prompts and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. I spent a good amount of money on all of these credits to try get AI to replicate what I just created. Some of my first generations look like this. 
yeah, not exactly what I'm going for. It's just a short zoom, a crossfade, and they call that the transition. But I truly thought AI was capable of doing this, so I kept trying with different prompts and different AI models. I tried Sora, I tried Higgsfield, I tried VO, I tried Kling, and I even tried some eye zoom transitions that they had built in, but it still just wasn't quite working until it did. Because eventually, I got this. And honestly, it's not terrible. It's not exactly what I was going for, but this is something that's probably gonna work for most people. So I quickly took that into DaVinci Resolve, I blended it with the original footage, and we had a really decent result. So the real question isn't which one looks better, because that might be subjective, Rather, it's which one is more valuable. With AI, we saved time, but we lost control. Uh, and with editing, we kept control and we gained a whole lot of understanding and we got exactly what we wanted. But AI will keep getting better and it will be more precise as time goes on. But what it still lacks is intent, taste, and human creativity. So what's my final takeaway? Well, I don't think editors are gonna be replaced, but I think button pushers are. So moving forward, I don't just wanna teach you what to click, I want to teach you how to creatively think. I want to teach you how to build from scratch, how to problem solve, and how to build things without even needing a tutorial in the first place. So if that's the type of content that you wanna see, make sure that you follow along and hit that subscribe button. And if you do still want a full step-by-step -step breakdown of this effect, let me know down below in the comments and I might just make it. And as always, Jesus loves you. See ya.